These are the dragons. Wealthy, well-connected, innovative, and influential. Each week, they make or break the dreams of dozens of budding entrepreneurs. You ready, Kelly? Yes, I'm ready, Peter. Let's go. <laughs> I'm a natural investor for you, but uh, you've stopped me. I don't know why you have to redesign somebody's complete well, business plan. question, Duncan, so I'd I like Benjamin to answer it. I'm not entirely convinced about this, although I sort of like it in a way. Thank you. Why have you felt it necessary to come in here and try and pull the wool over our eyes? Leisure and marketing expert, Deborah Meaden. Telecoms giant, Peter Jones and hotel and health club owner Duncan Bannertine have between them struck deals worth more than £7 million in the den. But ready to fight for the next shrewd investment is the creator of her own world-renowned interior design brand, Kelly Hoppen, and cloud computing pioneer, Piers Linney. The multi-millionaires will give each entrepreneur just three minutes to pitch their idea and then interrogate them on every aspect of their business. To face them takes nerve and vision. So who will leave with the dragon's money? Welcome to Dragon's Den, where a fresh batch of cash-hungry entrepreneurs are ready to face five self-made millionaires, hoping to convince them to invest in their business ideas and inventions. Now, most of us have had a bad night's sleep from time to time, and first to face the dragons today are a couple who believe they can help. Their answer involves sheep, but at no point do you have to count them. Hello, uh, my name's Roger and this is my wife Leslie and we've come here today to ask for an investment of £130,000 in our company and offering 15% equity. Four years ago we decided to reinvent the blanket. Uh, wool is the ideal material for bedding. It's the most breathable natural fibre known to man. It has the ability to regulate temperature of two people sharing the same bed. It's hypoallergenic, it's resistant to dust mites and it's resistant to mold spores. Wool is far superior to polyester, feather or down. And we're on a crusade to try and convert the British public back to sleeping under wool, but not under a blanket, under a barve. A cosy pitch from Roger and Leslie, who are seeking £130,000 in return for a 15% stake in their business. But Queen of Home Furnishings, Kelly Hoppen, foresees a problem with their plans for a wool-inspired revolution. The problem that you're going to have with this is converting people, because yeah. everybody's already this. got the bedding, and so it's an extra cost to convert. If the British public can be converted from wool to a feather uh, and, and uh, down within 10 years, when there wasn't an internet, when there wasn't the word of mouth that we've got today, I believe we can convert them back much quicker. Uh, and that's what's happening in our experience. Mm -hmm. So there's a big move to not only wool, but natural products. Is that one of your products there on the bed? Uh, yes. These are the duvets. Can I have a look at it? Of course you can, yes, please. Not sure we've got a big enough bed for you there. <laughs> you just wanted to lie down, Peter. <laughs> I just want to see how hot it is and sweaty. And... Ah. I'm a great advocate for wool, um, and it is a lovely product, you know, and it's, I don't know why we ever forgot it. You got me there. That's so, so far, that's great. But in the den, I'm looking for a business investment. Yep. So you've been trading for four years. Talk me through your revenue over those years. In the first year, we turned over 
about a thousand pounds. In the second year, that went to uh, 18,000. In the third year, that went to 120. And this year, with a, a month to go of the year, we're on target for 250. Last year, net profit... Um, 27%. 27,000. This year, 54. 27%. Uh, it's a net profit of 27%. You can't have... 27,000 as a net profit against 120 and be 27 percent. Roger's usually wrong on the figures. Yeah. Do you mind if I can just ask a question so I can get out of this bed? <laughs> Go on then, Peter, ask a question and get out of bed. Um, it's quite heavy. Is it? That surprises me. People tend to tell us that they're, they're, they're lighter than they expected them to be. I know a lot about bedding. There are duvets now that you can get which are very light so, like, literally, you can't feel them on your body, but they've got different types of filling, which just adapts to the body heat. Which is what this does. Naturally. Naturally. What do you need the money for? We need about 117,000 to upgrade the existing carding line, replace the quilting machine, and, and make it all synchronised. If we have the new machinery, it would just... It should actually cut down on our waste and our costs. Well, that's not a compelling business case. How much is it going to drive the cost down? We're not too sure. Um, surely when you decide to spend £117,000, you say this is the benefit. Or is it just because it's my £117,000 that probably. you haven't done? Yeah, that's not a good answer <laughs> yeah, in the den. No, I'll, I'll leave the figures to Leslie. So sorry. go on, what's the, what's the benefit of spending £117,000? Uh, well, the, 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 the machine we have requires two people constantly to be there okay so you can it. cost that you can say yeah. so I only need one person so what that's what I'm after what's the financial decision by the, behind spending 117,000 you haven't done that have you no we haven't done that no. we haven't done that figure a woolly grasp of the figures from Roger and Leslie and now Peter Jones is keen to test the logic behind the 850,000 pound valuation of their business if you had an opportunity now to get three quarters of a million pounds in your bank account, but I asked you to walk away from the business, would you take it? <laughs> but, no, I don't know. Um, <laughs> probably. That's a toughie. But <laughs> you I'm going to discuss need a, it for a few do, do you need a marriage guidance counsellor? Yes, yeah, so he certainly would. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> if you're potentially willing to sell your business for £100,000 less than what you're asking me today to invest in, that kind of tells me a story as a potential investor that you have overvalued your business coming in. Okay. Quite possibly. Okay. Just and makes so you, just makes your valuation a bit barking, doesn't it? <laughs> your valuation at the moment, I think, at this stage, is crazy, and I think you'll probably go out of here and think about that valuation point. But I can change the valuation because I can make you a different offer. But you've stopped me from doing that by not evaluating how you're going to apply those funds and the effect it's going to have on the business. I'm a natural investor for you, um, but uh, you've stopped me. Okay. Thank and I'm you. sorry, I'm sorry for that, uh, but I won't be investing. Okay. I'm out. Thank you. A blow for Roger and Leslie, as an initially enthusiastic Deborah Meaden walks away from the deal. Will Duncan Bannatyne be more warmly disposed towards the bedding entrepreneurs. I like it. I like the business. Um, I'm going to make you an offer. What I'm going to offer you is half the money. £65,000. But for that £65,000, I'd be looking for 25% of the business. That stopped us in our tracks. It's <laughs> well, a question of whether we're going to follow like sheep or whether we're going to go our own way. I love you as a couple. I love the fact you've built this business. The fact is, I, I wouldn't buy one. I know, I know, and I'm very organic, but I like nothing, like something that's so light on me. And it feels slightly claustrophobic, the world. 
I'm not going to invest. I'm afraid I'm out. But I, I honestly do wish you luck with okay. it. Thank, Thank you. you. Like the product. I think you've done a great job. Um, I just can't get excited by it, I'm afraid. Um, I think there is a market for this. You will sell some. Um, but it's not for me. So okay. I'm out. Thank you. So far, no one has matched Duncan Bannatyne's offer. And with their chances of securing an investment now hanging by the slimmest of threads, everything rests on Peter Jones. What do you think of Duncan's offer? Don't know. <laughs> we need to confer, don't we? Yeah. Well, obviously it's not the amount we require. I'm not interested in punting this on my own. I think it's a large amount of money, and I think Duncan's done the right thing by offering half, because he's de-risked it for himself. So what would be the offer? Or, or don't you want to make one? I will offer you £65,000, and I too will match Duncan's 25%. Thank you very much for the offer. So we'd all be equal partners. Can we confer? Confer. No, we're not going to give up 50%. No, we're not, are we? Because we believe in what we're doing. Yeah. We? Even if it's a bit slower, we'll take that chance. I don't know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It's um, a very difficult decision, and um, we're not even sure if we're making the right decision. It's been a very, very long, hard road to get where we are, and to actually give up 50% of the business um, is a little bit too high for us. So, unfortunately, we're going to say thank you, thank you but, but no. No, thank you. If that's your decision, I'm sad to see it go. Good luck to you. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank Thanks. You. So Roger and Leslie had two offers, but they decided that handing over half their business to the Dragons was ultimately too high a price to pay for investment. It was a hard call. Yeah, it was very tough. And when you're in there, you're so tempted to say yes, aren't you? Yeah. They think we're insane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we probably are. The Den sees no shortage of entrepreneurs who are also husband and wife. <laughs> but confronting five of Britain's sharpest business brains can put even the most solid of relationships to the test. Do you get on at the moment? husband and wife. Yes. <laughs> what, what happens if I invest and you don't get on? So did, did Cordial bring you together? In some ways, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How often you can say that. Yeah, exactly. But you're adorable. It's not put on. This is really you. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can guarantee that, yes. Married couple Peter and Claire Lomas were seeking £50,000 for a 15% stake in their compact trailer business. We'd like to introduce you to Towbag, the world's first truly fold-away trailer. It folds away in under five minutes, from this to this, without the need for any tools. Peter Jones was first to question the viability of the space-saving product. That looks about as practical as an ashtray on a motorbike. We've spread it out a bit here for display purposes. But trailers are a very popular accessory. I'm not saying it's not. I've got two trailers at home. I don't personally use them, but I've got two trailers at home. Yeah, but you've got three acres to put it on. Some people live, live in a terrace house, but they've got no access to the backyard through the sides. They can carry it through the house, put it in the garden shed in the backyard. A sceptical Deborah Meaden was unconvinced about the size of the market. If I only very rarely need a trailer, I'm going to borrow somebody's trailer. I'm not going to sit with that in my backyard or in my flat for the sake of the once or twice. If I use a trailer regularly, that's not going to do the job because it doesn't look very robust. 
It is, it is very robust. I would worry about putting too much on the back of that. For camping, for garden waste, for general household waste, for moving large bulky items, um, you'd be hard pushed to, to put more than 200 kilograms in a trailer. Despite scrutiny from the dragons, Peter's defense of his product had impressed Kelly Hoppen. The best bit about your pitch was actually watching you get so animated. I mean, I've never seen anyone so excited. Clearly, you're passionate about this. But Duncan Bannatyne had been closely observing the couple's dynamics and was keen to discover if Claire was as committed to toe bag as her partner. Peter, you come across very, very good as convincing everybody that you believe in this. Your wife doesn't. All of her body movement since she came in tells me she doesn't believe in this product. She believes you've made a big mistake. <sighs> and she's told you you've made a big mistake. And she's told you it's not going to make any money. Hasn't she? She hasn't, no. I, no. Like Pete, I totally, I totally believe in it. Speaking to the target audience, the trailer will definitely sell. Where their business was concerned, Peter and Claire appeared to be of one mind. But when it came to a product with genuine mass market appeal, the Dragons felt that Toe Bag was trailing a long way behind. Some things don't need inventing if there's not a market. This is not something for me. I'm out. Thank you very much. Next into the den is a Ghanaian entrepreneur who believes his hot chocolate drink is perfectly placed to exploit our collective sweet tooth. But will the prospect of setting up a factory in Africa stir the dragons? Hello, my name is Benjamin Mogabel. I'm here to pitch for £65,000 for 10% equity of my company, Benjamin's Hot Chocolate. Benjamin's Hot Chocolate is an ink cap product. The content is sealed at the bottom of the cap. So what you do is when you remove the foil seal, you have the content beneath. It's very convenient, very easy and very hygienic. I have currently been able to secure £433,000 from an investment company, and I have over 5 million plus cap orders in 11 countries. Would you like to taste Benjamin's hot chocolate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> An appetizing pitch from Benjamin, who is looking for £65,000 in return for a 10% stake in his Ghana-based business. But will a cup of Benjamin's hot chocolate have sweetened the dragons towards the prospects of a deal? So, what you want me to do is invest in a company... Yes, sir. ...that's going to build a factory in Ghana? Yes, please. ...and start making chocolate in Ghana? Yes, please, and export to the rest of the world. What's going on in Ghana at the moment in terms of business? Um, Ghana is the fastest growing economy in West Africa now. It's very stable now. The Ghanaian government uh, are giving uh, Western in uh, investors the opportunity to come and invest in Ghana. So therefore, there would be a 100% exemption on direct and indirect duties and levies, and also 100% exemption of income tax on profit. Why did you turn towards the chocolate, hot chocolate market? I've been in the marketing and advertising industry for about 10 years now. Hot chocolate is a beverage that it cuts across all range of people. Um, adults will drink hot chocolate. Kids will drink hot chocolate. People drink hot chocolate in Ghana already. Benjamin plans to undercut the competition on price, both in Ghana and here in the UK. But Kelly Hoppen is concerned that however popular this beverage is in West Africa, it'll always have limited appeal in the health-conscious British market. 
cocoa and chocolate, fabulous. Okay. The fact it's in a cup and you can pour water in it, great. And I love the name. The problem is the content for me. There's 362 calories in that cup. Yes. That's a lot of calories. So it's not a terribly healthy product. We will improve on the content because uh, what is happening here is um, people want to go more organic. Mm -hmm. uh, they are watching their health. They are watching their diet. So we intend to make the product a much more healthier product. Few things in your pitch. One thing, 433,000 pounds secured. Yes, sir. And it's in your bank? Um, not yet. We are on the due diligence uh, process. And what is happening here is I have the uh, letters of intent. Let me have a look. Well. Thanks. So if that doesn't happen, for whatever reason, due diligence isn't what they thought it was going to be, what happens? It's going to happen. And I've worked here in venture capital, private equity, four years. Until the ink is dry on that agreement, it may not happen. Well, it's, it's totally irrelevant because the investment would be subject to the, the 433,000 pound But I'm just interested, so... But, anyway, so because, that's it. Yeah, but is it... I don't know why you have to redesign somebody's complete well, business plan. Well, I've asked a question, plan. Duncan, so yes. I'd like Benjamin to answer it. So what would happen? You, you, could you progress the business? It's going to happen. So far, the Ghanaian entrepreneur is keeping his cool. But Peter Jones wants to drill down further into some of his initial claims. Let's pause for a minute and smell the hot chocolate, shall we? You've made, when you came in here, some pretty amazing claims. Why have you felt it necessary to come in here and try and pull the wool over our eyes. This is nonsense. You don't have 433,000 secured. You've got a letter that says they're going to look to try and invest in your business. They haven't even started a due diligence process. So that's worthless. Hello, Peter. Um, sorry for the misleading. Is it right? that you have not secured £433,000? I, I have secured £433,000. Oh, no. Don't do that. No, it's, it's, the, it's the truth. Owe it to and yourself, I to be honest. Don't do this. No, believe me, I am very, very honest, and I've secured £433,000. You have not? Yes, I have. That letter has not given any credence to you securing £433,000. And then you talk about these orders that you've got and you have no more than just people writing to you to confirm that you can sell your product at various events, they'll be willing to take your product on. You haven't got an order of five million, have you? I have. Where's the order? It's not, it's not order, but it's letter of, letter of intent. Is that the letter you're talking about? Yes. No order for five million? Is this... No intent for five million. Can I see the letter, please? Sorry. Um, it states here that the company intend to be a sole distribute a sole wholesaler and distributor for Benjamin's range of products and offers its huge ex experience in retail dynamics of the Ghanaian market to Benjamin's hot chocolate. So as to become a household breakfast of choice. Where's the five million order from that company? They have 11, they have 11,000 outlets. Where's the they five million order from that company? It doesn't state five it, million. I do not have an order, but I have letters of intent. I don't have an order of five million. You don't have an order for five yeah. million. Thank you. I'm out. Benjamin has lost his first dragon. A disgruntled Peter Jones has bowed out. Will Kelly Hoppen prove any more forgiving?
I, I don't think for one minute you're a liar. I think the way you came in and delivered it was incorrect. But I don't think you did it with malice at all. Um, I don't like the product. It's not something that I would invest my money in, but I honestly do wish you all the luck, but I'm afraid I'm out. Thank you very much. You're mistaken in your beliefs in, in, in how this is going to take off. And so therefore I'm not going to invest, so I'm out. Three dragons have now walked away from the deal. Will Deborah Meaden or Piers Linney be prepared to back Benjamin? If I decided to give you this money, I would have to do a lot of due diligence. And given the way you presented this, it would be a lot of due diligence. It's a huge amount of work to get anywhere near comfortable making investment in this business. One thing I want to add is I am an honest man. I'm not saying you're not for one moment. And um, I've been doing this by myself for the past two years. And it's, it hasn't come easy, which I don't expect it to. Um, but once you see this as a good product, I know that with your contacts, you could put us where we ought to be. Even if you are the most honest man on earth, and you do have a great idea, I didn't find it very difficult to get comfortable with investing in this, so I'm out. It's difficult enough to due diligence an investment, but to due diligence a country, its structure, what's happening there, it's a big ask to look at all of the evidence we've got ahead of us and actually then take a leap of faith, which could be quite exciting and thrilling and interesting to actually set up a manufacturing process over in, in, over in Ghana. But you would have had to deliver the sharpest pitch with the strongest evidence and the evidence is weak. And I'm afraid put all of that into the pot, it doesn't help me invest. So I won't be. I'm out. Thank you very much. Thank you. So a bruising encounter for Benjamin, who leaves the den empty-handed. A sugar-coated pitch, ultimately resulting in his prospects of investment turning sour. I'm feeling disappointed. I think the documents I brought into the den today is credible. If you're going to the den, you need a term you sheet, you need it. some orders, you need some letters. You need well, some... you can't set up a manufacturing plant in Ghana without half a million pounds. But I just know Africa's light. I bet you he'll get it you off the do. ground. I hope he does. I hope he does. Benjamin's Hot Chocolates is already a success, whether the dragons invest or not. Other entrepreneurs that have tried in the den include Rory O'Loughlin. He came in hoping to create a stir with what he believes is a must-have multifunctional kitchen accessory. Imagine you're cooking up a lovely Thai green curry at home and you've just stirred the sauce. What do you do with the spoon? You pinch Frog Jaw's legs and it opens its mouth. Place and position it on your cooking utensil. And that's really, really hard to remove. So it will travel with you while you're cooking. You can pinch frog jaw into your loaf and it will keep your bread fresh. Put frog jaw down, flat, and it stops the bottle roaring. Deborah Meaden wasn't bowled over by his spoon stand invention. Oh, still tips forward. Oh, still tips. Now tits back, and at that point, I don't know about anybody else, but I think that's going to get stuff on it. You get a frog in your soup. <laughs> Dragons, you are 
Or Brilliant is the word you're looking for now, Rory. <laughs> With the heat turned up, it was time for Piers Linney to bring the knives out. Have you invented something that doesn't need inventing and then over-engineered it? Um, uh, Piers, no, I don't think so. Is it OK if I get a, a glass of water? Yeah, yeah, of course. You've got a frog in your throat. That's <laughs> just getting a little bit croaky. <laughs> While keen cook Duncan Bannatyne saw merit in the product... I absolutely loved it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. ..he struggled with the branding. But I have to say, I think it's got a stupid name, Frog Jaw. I don't think it's really anything to do with frogs. I'm waiting for the business lesson. And interiors expert Kelly Hoppen was intrigued by how Rory planned to leapfrog the big players in the kitchen utensil market. What else have, do you know that's out there that's comparable, that has sold millions? The major competition would be the Joseph Joseph Reigns. Yeah, or Alessi or Philippe Stark. Yes. You know, Philippe Stark did come up with some pretty iconic, incredible designs for yes, the kitchen the that no one else had... That... Right. And they were all quite quirky. Yeah. I just think that the product, for me, isn't brilliant enough that it's going to sell huge volume. This is something that should form quite a small part of a range. It's not the foundation of a range. And that is the difference between where you are now and those other big brands we've talked about. A neat idea or a messy irritation, it was left to Peter Jones to serve up a final helping of Dragon Wisdom. You've pitched a gimmick product that will become a fad and ultimately the more of these that you have around your house, the more annoying they will become. So I'm going to say I'm out. So far, no one has left the den with an investment. Unfortunately, we're going to say thank you. Thank you. But, but no. No, thank you. Will any of these entrepreneurs succeed in striking a deal? Part of the bit about weighing something up is how good are the people in front of you. You're very investable. Thank you. Thank you. Given that smartphones and tablet computers are so prominent in modern life, we've had surprisingly few innovations based around... Den. Our next entrepreneur is flying the flag for technology with what she thinks could be the 21st century replacement for the traditional shopping catalogue. Hello, my name is Caroline Gross and I am here today with my business, Smarter. I am here to raise £100,000 for 10% of the business. Smarter is a mobile and web application that enables interactivity on video content. To illustrate this, I made a demo video of our current iPad application. So as we're watching these videos, we can touch the screen to reveal these icons that will instantly tell us more information about the products. Clicking order now will take you directly to the website that sells this particular product where we have more information. We can purchase it or go back to the show. And we can also share via Facebook, Twitter or email and, for example, send this link to a friend and carry on watching. So I hope that's clarified how our product works. The problem that our product is solving is inefficient monetization of product placement for content owners and retailers. Revenue will be generated through a hybrid of commission per sale and licensing the technology. Thank you very much. I welcome any questions that you might have. 
a quick fire pitch from Caroline, who's looking for a hundred thousand pounds in return for a ten percent share of her technology business. But cloud computing pioneer Piers Linney wants to establish more about how the software she's devised actually works. Caroline, hi, I'm Piers. Hi. So simplistically, I'm a damn dress manufacturer, whatever. I've got my five dresses, I've got a nice video of fashion show, blue, red, green. I can run it through your uh, system, tag the green one with a URL, mm -hmm. put it on my website yeah. or my phone app. Yeah. Yeah. When somebody sees the green dress, they see a little logo and they click it and it goes to a URL or a shopping basket and they can buy it. Yes, correct. They don't have to go to your website. No, uh, you only go to us when, for the tagging process. We've built this very, very simple way of tagging videos through an editor where you literally enter the product details, you say the tag is here, it moves from here to here, and it's in place instantly. So how, how unique is it? Uh, it's, unique not, it's, not, in... it's not a new concept, is it? No, it's, it's, uh, I think this has been tried to do in the 90s, to, uh, in the first times around. Um, but I think now people are more and more using devices that will actually suit this type of technology. For example, iPads and mobiles and laptops to consume content. Empty room, fill it up, talk is cheap, listen up. I don't know where we went wrong, but I feel I'm shaking these walls, yeah. Nothing safe, gotta take cover. Still the love, we just make glitter. Running and running, yeah, we got off track. Now we under attack. So I think this is a perfect timing to implement something like this. So what forum do you mainly see this being used in? One of the first companies that has approached us and uh, that we're talking to now is a TV show that has an uh, app and they would like to have this as an extra feature on their app so people can purchase the items featured in that content. So they'll use it as a second screen experience and through that they can engage people a lot more and also get sales through the products. So. I have a company, I create a video, you would then create this. Yes. So then, what is that going to cost me? So if you would like us to build you an application or add this feature to your app, it will cost you yearly £42,000 for the license, and then obviously you will be generating revenues through sales of the product. And will you then take a percentage of those sales? So we would split the sales 50-50. I'm trying to work out why me, with my warehouse full of goods and I'm fighting for my margins, am I really going to give you a big part of my margin? I can't see it. I think this can hugely increase the amount of sales you're going to get. So overall benefit for you is still going to be very, very large in comparison to what the costs will be. I am actually building an online business at the moment. It's a Kelly Hoppen website. I'm using a similar application to this. Your 42,000, is that a yearly fee? Yes, that will be the installation and then a yearly maintenance. Yeah, you see, I'm using a company, I give them a one-off fee, they're creating the whole thing, the whole package for me. This, to me, is you're making more money every year for something that I can be doing once I've actually got the whole system set up. The fact that this big client has approached us and offered to pay us a weekly fixed sum of money does signal to us that clients that would see huge benefit in this product are willing to... You can't to charge £42,000 for this type of technology. I think you would be better off saying, I will just sell this application to you for £500 or, or a couple of thousand pounds. A very big retailer in the UK has put aside 200000 a year for their app development. So charging 42000 for something that will actually generate sales and is a very engaging way of doing so, I think is very good value for money. A solid defense of her revenue model from the young technology entrepreneur. But will it be enough to convince self-confessed technophobe Duncan Bannatyne? I, I, I think it's crazy to think that you're going to get companies paying you £42,000 per year for license fee. <laughs>
only thing I can say is, I'm out. I think the I think what you dem demonstrated is is great. I could see people using it. I think the fact that you've gone very tablet based is is new and is good. When I do and we create websites on a worldwide basis for some major brands, from a top end you've got a complete end to end portal, and inside that portal you've then got unique ways to display video and encourage the user to have a user experience and buy. Yeah. You need a suite of applications and a, a further offering and maybe there are some things that you could go to to the next stage with something like this um, but Carol I wish you the best of luck I'm not going to invest and I'm out so I disagree I think you should focus on this application and make it the best it can be you should be a an online model that just makes this stuff work seamlessly mm -hmm. so I think the model you've pitched probably isn't the business model I think you should be going forwards with um, so I think you're fantastic, you've come in, you're very credible, you've achieved a lot, but it's not for me, so I'm out. Thank you. Three Dragons have now declined the opportunity to invest. It's now down to Kelly Hoppen or to Deborah Meaden to make an offer. Will they be prepared to put up the £100,000 she needs to develop her business? To try and charge somebody £42,000 a year for something which actually, in, in, it probably would, it'll cost somebody less. Once they've seen yours, it'll cost them a lot less to develop their own. The licensing fee is too close to the development fee. With things like this, what you see on the screen is the tip of the iceberg. As a comparison, I have had a quote from a large US development company. Just to build a simple prototype of this would cost $150,000, a prototype. $400,000 for them to develop this as an app. I could go to another company that would give me a different number. As good as you are, um, as good as this is. It's just down to that revenue model. You know, if I paid that much money up front, I wouldn't want to have to pay anything else. So I'm afraid I won't be investing. I'm out. Thank you. I think that you have to be careful because there's a lot of competition out there. Um, you should be selling more of what you do for less. Um, so for that reason, I'm out. But thank you very much for coming in. Thank you, in. and I appreciate all your advice and the opportunity. So Caroline leaves the den with plenty of suggestions, but sadly no investment. Despite enthusiasm for both the entrepreneur and her product, a highly ambitious revenue model ultimately turned the dragons off. There's so many, there's so Strange, many people. Strange, wasn't doing. it? Because it's Nothing she's new. got everything right. Yeah, but she got so much right, and then to get the revenue model right. She just go on net a porter, you can do Serious, that. Seriously investable individual, but pitched it wrong. There's nothing that frustrates the dragons more than an investable entrepreneur with an uninvestable hole in their business model. Everybody likes the product, but I can't invest at these levels. Oh, I am so sorry about that. Because I would have loved to have got on board with this. It's a massive flaw. I'm really upset about that. As the dragon who wears her heart on her sleeve, you can always rely on Kelly Hoppen to proffer a heartfelt opinion. It's getting sadder by the minute to me, honestly. If somebody proposed to me with a fake ring, I would hate that. The litmus test for whether a business can become a Kelly Hoppen investment is as straightforward as she is. You've got a lot of sugar in here, and I'm really anti-sugar. I don't know what the world's coming to. I mean, this is the most ridiculous idea. You're, you've created something for lazy adults, nothing else. To have something like that in my garden is an eyesore. I mean, I look at it and I sort of lose the will to live.
As she's often inclined to remind us, she's the name and face behind a globally recognised brand and understands the power of marketing. I have such a brilliant relationship with all the magazines and all the press. Don't get me wrong, it looks great. It's just you're trying to build a brand. And exactly. I know about brands exactly. and, you know, it doesn't all fit. I also have a huge celebrity client list that I can ring up and say, try this, use it, what do you think? I'm going to give you some advice. Get a PR company, get it yourself into Tatler, and you'll, you'll create something for yourself. Thank you for your feedback. And when it comes to appraising an investment, Kelly Hoppen has her own very special analytical techniques. It's all about the person, and you have to believe in that. So there has to be, for me as a woman anyway, a gut feeling. I love everything about the way you've come in here today. I think you should be the face of the brand. I think you're great. I think you've got huge potential. I love you, and I do love the idea of the product. I think you're fantastic. I might be mad, but I'm going to make you an offer. 60,000 for 10%. I would want 40% of both the businesses. I think I'd like to accept. Yay! One of the most famous rejections in Den history is probably Trunky, a ride-on suitcase for children. It didn't secure an investment, but it went on to big things, and now you see them in airports the world over. Well, I wonder if the memory of that will affect how the dragons react to our next couple, who are pitching a similar product. Hello Dragons, my name is Philip de Vogler and this is my wife and business partner Jessica Wang. We are here today to ask for £70,000 in return for 15% of our business. Our business is called Rumi Toys. Our first toy is called the Lumi Monster, a multifunctional toy children can play with, ride on and put their toys inside and pull along. It has omnidirectional wheels, that means that the toy can spin around very easily in any direction, so it's a lot of fun for the children. It has a gently closing lid, it has rubber teeth, and it has a pulling hook at the front, allowing the children to pull the toy. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions? Is that it? Is that your pitch? <laughs> this is our pitch. I like it. Short, sweet, and to the point. Thank you very much. Just like me, apart from I'm not sure. <laughs> a Peter Jones friendly pitch from Manchester based couple Philip de Voglia and Jessica Wang. They'd like an investment of £70,000 in return for 15% of their business. So, what do you do? Do you sit on it and, so, and you put pulled along? Yeah, well, there's several options. It's a ride on toy in the first place. Can you not demonstrate that? <laughs> I'll sit on it. And I'll pull you. <laughs> you ready, Kelly? Yes, I'm ready, Peter. Let's go. Stop! <laughs> what was that like? What was it like? Was that a serious question? <laughs> no, but was it comfortable or not comfortable? No, not at all, but I'm eight stone, and so... <laughs> but, I mean, it didn't feel um, unsafe, put it that way. Thank you. The dragons have had some fun road testing Rumi Monster. But Kelly Hoppen wants to bring the conversation back around to business, specifically Philip and Jessica's competition. I don't have children that are little anymore, so it's not okay. something I would go and buy, but I do on the side of my brain see them being pulled around at airports mm. and things. Mm. I mean, how many other products are you up against similar? Um, I think our main uh, competition uh, will be coming from uh, both toy storage and the ride-on toys. Uh, but, the th and, uh, but the thing is, our toy is a multifunctional toy, so... Um, Jessica, you know the answer to the question, why don't you just say... Uh, um, Trunky. <laughs> yes. Um, 
Um, it isn't, though, because it's not a suitcase. It's not a suitcase. No, but they've just said it's a combination of ride-on, which is trunky, yes. and storage, which would be... It's home storage more. It's, it's not yeah. a product that you can take to the airport because it's too big. It's, it's much bigger than, than trunky. It would be it's not designed to, to be stowed away in, in, in the airport. How much have you spent so far developing this product? Uh, so far, we've spent £170,000 on the product. Wow. You repeat that? £170,000. Well, do you mind me asking where you got that money from? Um, personal investments? Yeah, private uh, savings. I have an apartment in China, and I sold that apartment to fund the business. Have you got any orders at all? We are at very early stage uh, as um, uh, selling. We uh, had a pitch with John Lewis about two weeks ago and uh, uh, we got very positive response and we were asked to go back for a second meeting uh, in a few weeks time and so far they have shown us that uh, they are very interested in our toy. How much do they sell for? Uh, 69 99 yeah. How much do they cost to make? Uh, 25 pounds, yeah. including shipping from China that is. So what are you offering them in the shops at? Yeah, the wholesale price is £35. What are the shops' response to that? Because that margin looks quite tight for the retail. Yeah, it's, it's a bit tight, but they are positive about it. They, they like the uniqueness of the toy. They, they also do like the fact that the product has won several international design awards. What they'll like more than that is when the product yeah. sells. Because yeah. yes, the awards are lovely. But has anybody said to you, the margin's too tight? Well, we, because we actually haven't, apart from John Lewis, we haven't spoken to the other parties that we're trying to uh, get a foot into the door. And I guess in the next couple of weeks, we'll find out more about this. The tight profit margin on the product may be worrying Deborah Meaden, but family man Piers Linney has a different concern. I've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. You might think. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to work out. Would I have one or two of these kicking around our house? I can't see it. We've tested it with our own son. He's three years old. We didn't tell him anything, and he just did it spontaneously. For how long there? He I'll started with playing with our first prototype, and he, he just played with it, and uh, so far we, we don't see any sign that he's bored with it. <laughs> Can you pass me one, please? Yes, yes of, of course. course. Right. Okay. All right, there you go. <coughs> <clears throat> if you have to lift it up, could you put, could you insert a potty? Oh. That we, we haven't tried, to be honest. Um, we did put there a, might uh, be a possibility to do so. toys inside to show so the capacity. capacity. Yes. 17 litres, 16 and a half. Oh, oh no, we'd have to be a big child to see them. <laughs> I, wasn't thinking, I wasn't, I was not thinking of, of that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could. You could create a potty in the top I'm of it. I'm sure you could create a potty that way little one. Oh, that's a good one. Get your own. A lighter moment in the den as Rumi Monster continues to capture imaginations. But is there something troubling Deborah Meaden? There's something a little bit spooky about it. It's almost like the face has been cut off. I'm not sure that a child wouldn't find a hippo or a tiger more exciting and engaging. One of the things we would like to, to make available is uh, maybe uh, put for sale together some stickers so that the children can personalize the toy and they can then make it their own. They can put eyes on there, they make it you know, the way they like it if they wish. Now that Deborah has talked about its face and I look at it, when mm. I first saw it, I could just see the teeth Yes. But I actually agree, it's actually a body without a head. Okay. <laughs> it's actually quite weird looking at yes. it there without this face on it. Do you mind if I... Right. Please yes, go ahead, you know, please go ahead. I think we've got the solution. <laughs> Oh my no, that, God, I'm sorry, Peter, Peter that's worse. Like it. It's like it's smaller to a small child now. <laughs> Rumi Monster's design may be award-winning, but it's not winning over most of the dragons.
will Duncan Bannatyne share those reservations? I'm not, I'm not entirely convinced about this. Although, I sort of like it in a way. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to take a punt on this at £70,000. But I would offer £35,000. But for £35,000, I want 20%. Oh. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Philip and Jessica now have an offer for half of the £70,000 they were looking for. Time for Kelly Hoppen to have her say. I don't think it's something that I actually want to invest in. It doesn't seem like it's a business that I could bring much to. For that reason, I'm afraid I won't invest, so I'm out. So you've got no confirmed written orders? No. I'm sorry, we, we, can't. We, we just started talking to, to retailers. You have ordered uh, a first container. Uh, it's now uh, coming to a, on, on its way. Straight. Our plan is to, to start with a, a soft launch. It's not very soft, a container load. So I'll tell you where I am. Um, it's too much of a punt. I'm out. Everything now rests with Peter Jones and Deborah Meaden. Will either be prepared to complete or better Duncan Bannatyne's earlier offer? I don't disagree that it's good design. Mm. I just think it would be more engaging if it actually looked a little bit like an animal or looked like okay. something that they could actually engage with. Uh, but I, I, I don't think you're going to get me there, so I'm afraid I'm out. Okay. Thank you very much for your feedback. Part of the bit about weighing something up is how good are the people in front of you. You're very investable. Thank you. Thank you. Could I see this in some of the stores? Could I see it selling? Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of at the stage where I could. Um... It's the margin that is the worry here, and I don't think you've got sufficient margin to launch this. I'm going to say, sadly, I'm out. OK. Oh, dear, sir. It's just me left in, eh? Yes. If an old dragon had come in and matched me off, would you have taken £70,000 for 40%? Yes, we would gladly accept. Yeah. It's a real shame. I've got to say, <coughs> I'm actually in for half it, but for all of it, I've got to be out. Sorry. OK. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So heartbreak for Philip and Jessica, who came within a whisker of leaving the den with £70,000 and the backing of two dragons. But instead, they walk away with nothing. That was a good offer, Duncan. I thought so, yeah. It was a good offer. with me? No, I was, I was really close. It was just that, that margin. You've got to sell 100,000 of those to make any money. At the moment itself, when uh, Duncan made an offer, I was quite happy. He said, OK, there will be another dragon now. To match up. To match yeah. this offer. And unfortunately, it wasn't to be. So clearly maybe a bit more disappointed than maybe we'd have had a nose from all the dragons, you know. Well, it's the end of one of those unusual days in the den where the dragon's cash remains unspent. We've only had a handful of those in the history of the den. It wasn't for lack of trying, though. Spare a thought for Duncan Bannatyne, who was thwarted in his attempt to invest on two separate occasions. The conversation about all of tonight's pitches continues on Twitter, using the hashtag Dragon's Den. Next week in the den. See you, guys. <laughs> I don't like it. I really don't. That on its own, fine. Hate this.
When do you run out of money? In about four months' time. So you're really in big trouble then? Yes. Did you interrupt me to make the very same point I was making, Piers? I'm just checking. You said in three years you'll make two and a half million pounds. That is a delusional comment. Right, I'll take a punt with you. So this is an offer, but it's got a, a big caveat. From Dragon's Den to Room 101, Kelly Hoppen shares her pet hates with Frank Skinner on BBC iPlayer. Some nimble fingers needed for a new series this Tuesday night. Sewing machines at the ready, stitching starts at eight for the great British sewing bee. The next BBC Two hits the slopes for Alan Davis at Brace Ski.